Welcome, 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 as always, to Live from Vietnam. Hey, man, every Friday night, the home of J. Cole, the home of Apion Crockett, Bone Crusher Smith, Dennis Smith Jr., Michael Williams Jr., and many more. One I'm going to introduce, we always say, but we're going to wait till later to introduce him. And always the illustrious host, co host with the most. We got the Pod Father, my man, the Prime. What up? What up? We got the story of the Ville 26 in my own Mr. J. What's good, everybody? And of course, hip hop, 26 own hip hop uh, star, Latin Loonies. What up, bro? Yo, Pickett, is, is, is my man on deck or no? Loonies, what up? You want hear us? Loonies, say something, bro. His mic muted. Your mic muted. I got you. I got you. We in here. We live. We live. Okay. Hey, P, is my man on deck? Yep. Well, as always, we usually say these, this name in the introduction, but uh, you may know him from his role on Notorious as Damian D. Rock Butler. You may have seen him on uh, Law and Order SVU or HBO's Five Rounds or many more. One of Fayetteville's favorite sons, my man Dennis L.A. White. Welcome to the Vietnam. Live from Vietnam, man. Going on 2 6, huh? Ah, my man, my man, 50 grand. What's up, man? Welcome to the show, bro. Thank you, man. And from what I understand, uh, welcome home. So you good? You, you landed? You, you in the 2 6? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm back to Chris. Bam. I got a movie screen. Done. Uh, you're cutting in a lot a little bit, LA. I don't know if everybody else hearing what I'm hearing. Uh, uh yes. if you got some yeah, buds, I'm cutting yeah, out. You got some buds, yeah. You were cutting out a little bit there, bro. Let me get you right. Hold on, hold on. There you go. There you go. Can you so, me? fellas, yeah, I, absolutely. I hear you now, LA. Cool. So, go ahead and say what you were saying. So, you get the two six. Welcome home, yeah. bro. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm here at the crib, man. It's good to be home. You know, the Ville's grown. It's crazy, all this stuff that's that's being built up here in the Ville. Um, I, I love it, you know. And I'm here. I'm, I got a movie screening called The Prayer. I'm doing this Sunday in Fayetteville. So that's the reason why I'm back. And to be on the show. Oh, well, definitely, man. Well, hey, well, give us the, give us the deets on that for Sunday, man. We will definitely show out. You know how we do in this city, man. We show out. And you are, that's one thing I want to give you. Before we get into this, I got a lot I want to talk to you about. Lately. I'm sure the dudes do, too. Man, you always show out for the 2-6, man. In L.A., I see you in L.A. with celebrities. You rocking the, the Ville chain. You rocking the Ville life. Shout out to my man, Lamar McNeil. Of course, we all know him as eh, one of the dopest rappers in the Ville. But big ups to you, bro, for rapping. Yeah, man, you know, a lot of people have come through the city and, you know, they left their mark and they go out and they don't speak about it. So, you know, the Ville's always supported me, always showed me love, so I got to show it back. 100%. You know how the city do. So tonight we're celebrating the ladies in hip hop, but before, you know, of course, we got we got L.A. on here. So we got we to talk. I want to talk to you about a few things, man. One thing a lot of cats don't know about you is we got a lot of video game heads my man voiced like five voices on the Warriors video game. The dude was on Death Fight for New York, on the Death Jam Fight for New York. Talk about it. So, and also, let's talk about a little bit the wonderful uh, world of Dennis, man, how you got in, uh, in, in the hip-hop game first, man. Give us you know, a little insight. You know, back in the days, I always was rapping. I was always spitting. And um, it's, there's a, a, a crew called uh, Bomb Shelter. That is crazy. I used to manage. Them. Big up the nervous wreck and RIP filthy rich. RIP, yeah. And you know, J Cole came up underneath them, um, which is crazy. But yeah, so I was always rapping and everything. And so I moved to DC, recorded my album, The Wonderful World, Dennis. And you know, we hit Billboard Billboard charts pretty hard, man. And so you know, that was two thousand three. For for Eric, all the hip hop heads, two thousand three. It was a Billboard charted album, right? Out the Bill, uh, I mean, out the Bill. 
Yeah, that's when no, you have to Paradise Records and buy the, the CDs and stuff like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's before the streaming sites. But yeah, man, so I've been I've been part of hip hop for a long time and I've been um in this business for a minute too. So, you know, we I always call us a little international city, man. Like and we getting that reputation, you know, for a city of under three hundred thousand, man. We, we 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 punch pretty hard. We punch above our weight. Yeah. Talk to us about how you transitioned from that hip hop into man. You got a lot of acting credits. I mean, you know, you've been in a lot of stuff. So how did you transition that into acting, man? And, and, and guys, and I don't want to step on anybody's toes. If anybody has, has anything to ask LA, please jump in. Please, right quick. We gonna get so, into it, but I wanted to talk to him. Yeah. So I've, I've been in like eighty movies and TV shows, and I started here in the Ville. I I was, you know, Cape Fear Regional Theater. I start. I was doing plays there. That's what's and up. All the independent little plays I was doing that in the cool. Ville. I was in forensics in high school. Yeah, yeah. At, at um, Lewis Chapel, I was doing forensics. Hey, I went to Chapel. Right, that's what's up. So I was always doing that, uh, acting, plus playing sports, and I just did it's something I was great at. So I did my first movie out of Myrtle Beach while I was living in Fayetteville. I stole my mom's car, drove to Myrtle Beach, went to the audition, booked the role and everything. So that was- that That's was a two seat shit. I stole my mom's car and beat feet to the fucking audition. Welcome <laughs> to the two Word, for real, for real. So then I, you know, I moved, you know, I couldn't do everything in the bill. So I moved to, to West Palm Beach, studied, I moved to DC. That's where like I did a lot of plays. I did, a, um, I recorded my album, as you know, independent films, and then I moved to New York. New York is when everything kind of popped off because I started hosting that Fuse television. So I was the first African-American on Fuse television when it started. So, you know, with that show, yeah, give it up. Got out of the city, man. Big up to the city. Big up to LA, man. Go ahead, LA. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I with Fuse, I was interviewing I mean everybody from Marilyn Manson to 50 Cent and everything. So that kind of really opened up the doors for all my for my career, for real, for real. So also while we talk about it, man, so before I get into tonight's topics, which I, I can't wait to get your opinion on these, and I know a later guest, which we're not gonna announce right now, but they know what's up. That you got some relationship with there, so that's good too. So I want to talk about what you're doing now. I know you're doing acting seminars. Give us an update on what you're doing right now, man. So I just finished a movie starring a movie with Omar Gooding called uh, News Cycle. I just wrapped that last week. Um, I have a company called At Like You Knows, at like you know dot org, where I teach acting, I teach celebrities, I teach people who want to come up in the game and just help them learn how to be working actors. Um, I got a screening this Sunday for a movie called The Prayer that I directed and co-written. Um, it's 3.30 p.m. at 118 Johnson Street in Fayetteville. Um, it's free. You ain't got to pay to get in. You can wear whatever you want to wear. Come come out. Um, and then I I wrote a, a, a movie called The Chronicles of Nam that we're going to shoot here in Fayetteville. Um, like three well, I got to get, I got, I've seen you my reel. I got to send you my reel, bro. You know, I got the three two movies for my credit, so I'm going to send you my reel. Yeah, so we, we're, shooting <laughs> that in the, we're shooting that in the bill, man. So, you know, I came here um, and had a, a workshop, and everybody that attended the workshop, I, I'm casting them in the movie. So I'm I'm trying to build this film community here in the bill. So that's what I'm doing. I got some connections. We're going to make it pop. So, so that's dope. And I hope that you link up with Barry Williams while you're here. Because, of course, shout out to Barry Williams, man, Reverend Studios, Barry Williams Films. Uh, I think you guys would definitely hit it off. He's got a lot going on, man. He's, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with that, L.A. But if you're not, bro, Barry Williams, you know, got seven movies, five movies on Tubi, another movie on the way. Excellent. Produced, you know, got the best sound. Well, I see. Wait a minute. Hang on now. My eyes deceive me. We have uh, the CEO of Wood Boy Digital has joined us. Straw, you made the you take guy. What's up, bro? What's good with everybody, man? What's up with y'all? Well, I want to bring up the speed because we got, of course, Dennis L.A. White. So we've been we've been getting up to, you know, of course, picking his brain. And now we're about to move on to some topics, man. So uh, I, I, I got one question. Yeah, go. Please, yeah. Hey, hey, so L.A., man, this is Latin Looney's, man. Right here. Go ahead, bro. What up, what up? Uh, you know, I was reading up on your IMDb, man. Explain to me, um, kind of what what morph is. 
You know what I'm saying? I know they didn't. Really oh, that's dope. About more, so like I, I kind of want to, you know, give you an opportunity to kind of explain what you what you got going on with that. What I appreciate Morph is movement opposing racial profiling harassment. Um, okay. In 2013, me and this shorty was out going to Myrtle Beach. There was a corn. There was a cotton field. She never seen real cotton before. We pulled over to look at it, and two cop cars came up, harassed us you know, violated us and everything. So because of that situation, wow. I, I started a foundation to kind of give, you know, knowledge about racial profiling and harassment. Uh, because of that situation, we're number one, number three on CNN, all, all time stories. Um, we was on Dr. Phil, MSNBC, um, you know, so it, it just really trying to get people knowing that racial harassment and profiling is still alive. And, and unfortunately, it's still mm -hmm. here. Facts, facts, facts. All right, um, man. See, once again, man. Hey, before anybody, I don't want to jump on anybody. Once again, a two six artist doing what we do, man. For street type, you know, movement. Go ahead, man. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of pick your brain or, or kind of get questions about since you have a history in the and the two six as far as music, and uh, you know, one of your co stars Who does uh, is also um, you know from the two six area. I had some some. Um, you know, history in the two six area, uh for uh well actually the, the individual that, that played big in another another movie. Um mm. has uh, has some uh You're talking about Wavy, right? Wavy yeah. Jones, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Oh yeah, Wavy Jones. Yeah, he just, Don't he just guy, shout out to Wavy That's my man, fifty grand. So I mean how do you see the, the growth of the scene in this area, you know, since you since you started and until now, you know, what do, what do well, you think about what's going on? If you're kind of tapped into what some of the situation and the problem with Fayetteville, there's a lot of talent here. There's, I met some of the most talented people from Fayetteville, but there's never really been an outlet. The old boy that's on Atlanta, he's from, he went to East Smith, you know, um, the, the he played Paperboy. He's from, he's mm -hmm. from Fayetteville. Um, but there's not a movement where we all, get together you know what i mean so that's the problem with fairville i see there's a lot of talent here and so i'm i'm trying to make it my point to kind of bring the town together yeah people know j cole that's great but there's a lot of other people that are in this business whether it's sports music acting that has made some noise in this business so you know i, I try and connect with all of them and show, show them all love no doubt. And that's why I really wanted to get you on the show, L.A., was because not only have you made a career in what a lot of people, you know, we, we like to call it Dreamville because a lot of artists in this town, a lot of people want to make a uh, life in the entertainment business. But you have, not only that, you stayed repping the Ville. And I don't think you get enough credit for how hard you be repping the Ville amongst, which L.A., man, he being modest, man. This dude is around a lot of celebrities, man. Look on his pages and sites. I mean, he, he lived in the life. He working. He working this life, and he repped the two six hard everywhere you go, bro. Big up to you, LA man. No, no doubt. That's no again. I, I got a question. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Pete. Is it, um, is it harder to play a, a real life person as a like to act as a real life person? Hell oh. yeah! <laughs> yeah, that's a bro. You know why? <laughs> Let me tell you why. Because with real life person. It's not just about that person. It's about all his family members and cousins that know. Oh, wow. What I was about to say. So I had to go through a process of meeting them. I, I'd be in New York at a club. They run up on me, yo, D Rock is my cousin, you know. And so really had to make sure that they were okay with it. And hands down, all of them, you know, I was just with uh, Sticky Fingers in LA, and D Rock's cousin mm -hmm. came up to me, like, yo, man, I love how you represent my cousin. So that's the hardest part. And when we shot the Notorious, D Rock was locked up. He was locked up for the whole shootout with um, Foxy Brown and them at. Oh, wow. So mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to speak with him face to face. So I, I had a lot of his transcripts, and Little C's was, was really, you know, with me side by side, really coaching me. Hey, we would go to clubs and people that knew him. I had homies that was locked up, homies that were from the Ville that was locked up. So I went to see them in jail just to get their mannerisms and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a it's it's different because you want to make sure that the person you're portraying is proud. And so I met D Rock a week before the premiere. He was at a club with Diddy, Puff, and um, we you know we chopped it up. 
and we've been cool ever since. Great answer, man. So also, just to, just to jump on the back of Paul shit, uh, yo, did y'all realize when you were shooting a tourist, like, biopics get a lot of fucking hate and whatever, but I think the hip-hop community as a whole agrees that Notorious is one of the, like, dopest of all the biopics, man. You were part of that. Did y'all know when you were filming it, like, we getting it right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. I mean, what people don't know is that Notorious was an independent film. It was, it was for Fox Searchlight. So it was an independent project. So our budgets wasn't like the same as Three Out of Compton, which was I feel is one of the best uh, bio, oh, yeah. bio I, I, But I agree. Yeah, I agree. But the difference is, you know, uh, Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, they're still alive. So they can say, this is how I felt. Big was gone. So we had to piece together stuff he wrote, people that knew him to make this happen. And so... We knew while we were filming it, this is this is going to be special. We knew that it was going to be really, really big. And um, but then we had a lot of hiccups along the way um, before we dropped it. Uh, Fox and Searchlight they took away like a thousand theaters because they didn't think it was going to be good. So we we were limited. So when we did come out, we sold out every theater. Other theaters started selling tickets. Um, for notorious to, uh, for other theaters like it was a lot of scandal going on and so we came in number two that week but if they had to kept us with the theaters we would have been number one no problem so you know we were still like i said it was an independent film it was a black film so we were still under the gun with that but you know it's a classic man people still watch it people still love it i can tell by my, resi- my residual checks i still get from the tourists. <laughs> I can tell you that's <laughs> right. That's yeah. right there. It's yeah. all about the residuals, baby. So, man, first of all, yeah, big ups to LA, man. Thanks for anybody got anything before I jump into the meat of the show right here, right quick, because we're gonna have him the rest of the way. He he being real gracious. Everybody good? Good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna say anything. Oh, well, we're gonna we come, come back. What up? We're gonna come back to you. We definitely come back. First of all, we you got we got some questions for you. Yeah, right here. So tonight, man, it's it's about the ladies, man. You know, a lot of people say, you know, it's a misogynistic culture, hip hop, whatever. And we hate on the women, a lot of that in the social media. Tonight we're gonna celebrate the ladies with the topics on live on Vietnam. Uh we're gonna start off with who was the dopest female MC. And just because we've been talking smack to me all week, I'm going straight to the prime minister, the father, Paul Picker. Who was the dopest female MC, bro? Oh, man. Yeah, oh, man. Don't tell that shit. I mean, you know, the most successful would probably be, like, Lauren Hill, Missy Elliott. But for me, if I got to go with my dopest female rapper, I got to go with Foxy Brown, man. I just got to go with Foxy Brown. That's That's... I, I like the females that rap hard, that got the that, that be trying to spit bars. She rap with Nas, A Z, the firm biz. Um, that's who I gotta go with. Foxy is, is my dopest, but she definitely ain't the most successful. I can't give her that. I cannot give her that. Uh, well, the, well the question one is successful, so and all of this is subjective, so that's that's cool. Yeah. yeah, so that's who I'm going with, man. Foxy is my number one as the dopest. All right. Dopest. Well, as I always expect y'all to give, you know, the top three or whatever. We're going to go straight to the special guest, L.A., man. Who do you feel like is the dopest female MC of all time? Or your the top three, The dopest female that you heard thus far. My voice get wetter. It do get better. Uh, MC Light. What? She's on my list. Mm-hmm. Yo, MC Light was like a beast back then. You know, uh, of course, like he said, Lauren Hill was great. Uh, but I, I just feel like... Uh, MC Light was that gritty female rapper, and her bars was tight. Only she gets enough you can't deny. Yeah. You can't deny. We've got a multiple female categories tonight. MC Light's probably going to make a lot of them. You take God, man. Welcome, to, welcome, man. What say you, bro? Dopest female MC of all time. I got a few, but my, my dopest, my dopest, I got to go with the Carolina girl, which is Rhapsody to me. You know what I'm saying? I got to stop. Hey, shout out to Rhapsody, man. That's you know what my girl, man. Shout out to Rhapsody, uh, bro. But, you know, like, let me look at my list. Uh, of course, next yeah. will be Missy Elliott. Next will be Missy Elliott on my list because she's so versatile. 
and she can hit the clubs like I told y'all last week. Uh, MC ain't the GOAT if he can't hit the club. That's what I'm saying. If they can't make the club rock and spit, you ain't you ain't up there for me. Next one probably would be, I'll go a little current. And niggas, and motherfuckers might think I'm crazy, but I like her. Doja Cat's dope to me. Oh, yeah. She can spit, bro. Spit. You know what I'm saying? Too. Yes, sir. And I got Debrat, because she was the first one, I think, to go platinum. She's dope. And she, she, reason why I picked Debrat is because she might be also young, be a male MC, too. Come on, man. Don't do that. She, she's had a baby, man. Don't do that. You know what I'm saying? But the reason why that's I picked Debrat is because it, it, <laughs> reason why I picked Debrat is because when we was, we was on that crisscross high, Jermaine Dupri brought the brat right in, and it just like it was crazy, you know. Because she was wearing crisscross clothes. Hey man, you know you know how it was back then. Yeah, the man. same you style, know, like TLC had the same style too. You know what I mean? But oh, you know by the way, but, uh, just why you say that? The same art director that shot this, uh, Sir Rob Patterson, shot my artwork in two thousand. Just go ahead, man. Let me go ahead. And I got, I got one more though, and this is a wild card. It's the girl Fly J, Camouflage Dog. I was a big Camouflage fan. So to see his daughter go crazy, she played for LSU. But see her go crazy on the mic is ridiculous. She be snapping. So big ups to her too. No that's, doubt. That's, no that's doubt. all. That's what I got for you. So I'm gonna go over to uh, uh, Mr. J, the, the two six historian. What what you got, Jay? Yeah, well, I gotta go with uh, my tops is, is Queen Latifah. Uh, she's got you know two iconic mm. joints. Um, and I'll do that. You know, my next one will be Rhapsody. And, of course, mm -hmm. both both of them have the, uh, uh, a joint together on her e I mean, we terribly biased, by the way, too. But I don't give a fuck. What up, Rap? Go ahead, bro. <laughs> Rap, nice. That's my girl. Yeah, that Hubs, Hubs put on her uh, Eve album with Queen Latifah is that's a beautiful piece of music right there. Uh, mm. Of course, on my list will be Eve. Mm-hmm. And MC Light. Mm -hmm. And then I got to put the Queen Bee on there. You know what I'm saying? Uh -oh. No counts. Okay. Three okay. All right, so we're going to shift, shift it over to uh, Latin Loonies, man. What's up, Latin Loonies, man? What's up? Que pasa, Capone? Uh, so I'm going I'm to update y'all's list a little bit. Cause, uh, yeah, well, yeah, just so you know, L.A., L.A., uh, Looney is our voice of youth. He's still an active MC doing his thing every day out here. Number one, got to go with Young M.A., man. Uh, I can't believe nobody said nobody said. Now, wait a minute now. We definitely going to talk about Mike be a dude. Might be a dude MC. He's a female, brother. Ain't no doubt. I think she can beat you. I think she can beat you up, dog. I, I legit think she can whip your ass. Guy, but I definitely gotta go with Young and May. Um, oh. I got Snow the Product on my on my list. I got oh, oh yeah, yeah. shout out to Snow the Product, man. Once again, another off my home, man. Shout out to Snow. Mm -hmm. I got yeah, go ahead, bro. Um, Cardi B, definitely. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I can't miss out on Nicki Minaj, bro. Like Nicki Minaj is, is she, she go, she rapper, go, said she go to Doja Cat, like you said. Um, mm -hmm. and I got to go with 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 Coyle Ray for sure. What? Yeah, man. Coy, yeah. Coy, go in, man. <laughs> yeah, man. At the end of the day, yeah, man. Guys, you know what I'm saying? So I, I got to give it to Coy Ray because she up there with them. She, 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 she selling yeah, she out. Did. Her, her pops didn't go in, but she goes in. <laughs> so, so like, <laughs> I only said that. one, so I get five two. Oh, no, yeah, hey, we're going to talk. Well, as always, at the end of the subject, I always come back to everybody in LA and let them keep telling it, you know what I'm saying? I only said one. Because we're going to bring. Well, welcome to Live from Vietnam. Hey, you know how we do. When you get your TV moment, you make the most of that shit. Uh, no, nah, but I got you, bro. So, I, first of all, I'm gonna, before I get, I'm going to go back to everybody in, of course, LA first, because you, you're the celebrity guest, bro. Uh, you know, uh, we talk about this a lot on here, right? Hip hop, rock and roll, the genres, how we all view it. List to me are your own list. Top five, who you think the greatest, whatever. Whenever I read them, I don't, I don't really get offended because I'm an artist at the at the end of the day. So I mean, for me, Lauren Hill, man, is the dopest female artist of all time. She's enigmatic. She just hit us with one and then dipped out, 
It was so, and her bars was crazy complex. Uh, and then Bahamadia, I really enjoyed Bahamadia, man. We're gonna talk about female albums later, so I'm gonna leave a little bit of that. Uh, MC Light, Queen Latifah, definitely Foxy, uh, Ice the Banks, later known as Lynn Q, man, as a lyricist and MC, mm -hmm. one of the dopest. Um, Eve, definitely Misty, and one nobody probably gonna say MIA. Uh, Cause she from Europe or whatnot, she dope too. But Rhapsody, man, Rhapsody is a transcendent talent, man. She does not get the life she needs to get. She cannot write with any of them. Um, so okay, we are gonna bring it back, man. So first, I'm gonna go to, of course, that ain't man. Give us the yeah, flesh it out, man. Tell us what you think, bro. We would love to hear. It. So uh, if I got five, then you know, do your thing. Yeah, you got whatever number you want to kick out there. Definitely MC Light. I'm I'm glad you said Bahamadia. Bahamadia was dope, underrated. Um, Super dope. Oh man, uh, Rhapsody, of course. You know what I'm saying. Shout out to NC. She's her her shit go hard. Um, Super. You know, I don't think that that I just heard it be as nice too. Nice. Uh, yeah, of course. I think she got some skills too. Um, and then probably my fifth one uh, will probably be uh, what's I think she from she from Jersey too, uh, Lady Luck. Oh, mm. hey, look at you! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, bro. Yeah, Lady Luck. That's why I like two six motherfuckers right there. You know what I'm saying? L.A. smoothly done. Uh, before we go to the next uh, topic, um, anybody have anything to add? Yeah, definitely. Yep. Uh, okay, all right, first go I'm going to go to Jay. Jay. All right, Jay, go, Jay. Jay, go ahead. Now I'll come back to you, Jay. Yeah, I, I, I'm remiss for not saying Lynn Q. Of course, she was I let on. it fall on him. I let it fall on him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> dope, dope. Uh, one of the features on our joint, the Empire's joint, uh, Message to Hip Hop, she was on that joint. Wait a minute now. So, See? That's what I'm talking about. So, See? So definitely, uh, shouts out to her to bring it current. Scarlet, Scarlet is a, is a definitely dope. Um, Scarlet is fire. Scarlet, yeah, yeah. I like Scarlet. Yeah, she real. is. Yeah. She dope. No yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna break into this before I go back to mutating. Shout out to all the female MCs in the two six: Nisi Brown, A Game, Lady Rain, Candy Got Bars, many others. But a shout out to y'all, man. I know y'all doing it. Shout crazy. out to Tia Hart and, too. She, Tia Hart. Yeah, shout out. Shout out to your heart. You take, man. You got, anybody got anything to add? I'm moving on to the next topic. No, nah, I'm just I surprised, man. I'm surprised uh, y'all left Rod Digger off. Oh, come on. I, she, you she, know what I did. did. You know what you, know, you know why. <laughs> you know what I did. Rod Digger's cold, no, man. No, shouts out to Rod Digger. I did two shows with Rod Digger. One at Big Shots. First show ever I did was with Rod Digger and Rampage. And we did one at Illinois State University. It didn't go through because of a janky promoter, but uh, mm -hmm. it was. Like I did two shows at Rod Digger, too. One at the Crown Coliseum, one at the Holiday and Bordeaux. Shout out to Kenny and D Rock of the Yin Yang Twins. Holla at the Kenny. Anyone want to add anything? Nope. I'm nope. surprised. Nice wow, Cricket's on me, man. Say what? Nobody said Lil Kim, Remy Ma. I think they well, said I mean, they said Kim. So they said Queen B. We were, we, we got several topics of albums and stuff. So I think we're gonna be mentioning those. So the next, what well, you know, we we can keep celebrating the ladies tonight. We're gonna talk about the dopest female rap album of all time. So, LA, I'm I'm not gonna go to you first. I'm gonna let you listen because we got we cast done homework. I'm gonna go to tonight. We're gonna go to Latin Loonies. Two Six is one of his dopest artists right now. What's the dopest female rap album of all time, bro? Well, uh, I got a couple of them, man. Um, I got to go with Young Ma, her story uh, in the making. Um, when she dropped that, that went number one with Ooh. She had Big on there. You know, she had Petty Watt one and two. Ooh two. was a dope single. So, you know what I'm sure. saying? That, that definitely came out. I might have to go uh, Cardi B, Invasion of Privacy. Definitely mm -hmm. because of I like it, you know, Bodak Yellow. Uh, and then, then that I feel like that that album is basically what kind of made her like household, like everywhere, kind of known. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody was hearing her. Mm -hmm. after that. 
know what I'm saying? That kind of stamped it for me. Um, you know, I can't, I can't, we can't go nowhere without saying Lauren Hill, of course, you know, that's 20 million, 20 million sold right there by her. And still know? selling. She's still going flat for every couple of years with nah, that album. And then, uh, Missy Elliott, man. Mm-hmm. Which album? Which one? Which album? Because she done dropped several. We talking albums now. Missy Elliott's done dropped hell albums. So addictive. Okay, yeah, yeah, Definitely yeah. Like of course. To me, um, to me that that that's really a crazy album to me, just because of how I can kind of hear how different she is. Like you said, she was versatile. You know what I'm saying? And one of the songs mm-hmm. you hear her screaming her ad libs. You know what I'm saying? And the next, it's just she singing. And you're like, yo, shit, yo. Missy is cool. one of the most underrated hip hop artists of all time, yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. I would definitely. So we're gonna, we're gonna kick it down to the Mutate God, uh, CEO of Woodboy Digital, man. Dopest female album mm-hmm. of all time. Or you I got um. Yeah, look at my list. First, I got first I got Missy Elliott, Super Duper Fly. Because so uh, many hits came off that mug, man. Was that, that the trash ridiculous. bag? Came out of the trash that bag. the trash bag joint, you know? Trash bag joint, bananas. Crazy, you know what I'm saying? Bananas. Man, that just set it off, man. It was so many different sounds and sonics on there, you know, Timbaland on the production. You know, it was, it was ridiculous. Um, then we got, um, like I said, the Brat Funk the Five, man. It was just at a time where that, that shit just took over, man, especially in the South. Like, you know, we was fucking with it. Um, and then... uh. And then like like a Latin Looney said, man, that Cardi B first album, man, because a lot of, that album, my, my woman was listening to it so much. I it was just a dope album. It was a dope album for men to listen to. Like we was like listening to that joint. You know what I'm saying? It's like crazy. So yeah, that, that's that's one too. So yeah, that's it for me though. All right, so I'm gonna jump in real quick before I kick it to LA. And I'm gonna just say, you know me, I'm the old head, you know, you can tell by these. I'm a silverback. Uh Foxy Brown's here on Nah Nah. I love that album. That's one of my favorite albums. Uh, MC Light, Light is a Feather, classic. I mean, game changing to me as far as MC uh, Little Kim's Hardcore, right? Yeah. Uh, Bahamid, Bahamidia's Collage, which, man, I think a lot of people sleep on, man. Go back right now. If you've never heard of Bahamidia, because I said it tonight, go go right now to where your favorite streaming service, listen to Collage. It's a no skip, right? She was part of that whole kind of camp low movement uh, mm-hmm. of, the, of the mid-90s. And she's just dope. Uh, Nikki D's album, Daddy's Little Girl. That shit kind of changed because before that, I ain't really listening to no female MCs. And then, you know, she was hard. You know, so so uh, that's me. And I want to go right to L.A., man. Dennis L.A. White. What, what you got, man? Female rap albums that really, you know, you feel like was was, was a shit. I mean, I, I say in no, no particular order, um, hardcore, Little Kim, uh, mm-hmm. Miss Education. Game changing oh, album. It was a game changing oh, album. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was, it was, it was I love the, the cover. I love the artwork. The game. Yeah, the artwork was crazy. We <laughs> like <laughs> fat pussy today because she did that on that. We, <laughs> that's why you motherfuckers are staring and zooming in on the shit right now because of hardcore. Tell them uh, that. Light as a rock. Nice album. I'm sorry, yeah, it was Light as a Rock, my bad. Yeah, I said Light Friday. Oh, Pink Friday. Friday, nobody, yeah. That was, that was definitely a classic. Hey, Collage. Yeah, I like that, man, because tell them, tell them, LA, man, that Collage is still, I, I listened to it like a month ago, man. And the yeah. production was great on that album, too, man. Like, she, for real, for real. Um, okay, so I want to... I was, I'm going to go up to the Prime Minister, the Pop Father, right here, Paul Pickett. Paul Masson, what's up, bro? Uh, you know how I always like to do it, you know, success, most successful and then my favorite. Um, of course, most successful, you would have to say Lauryn Hill, Missy Elliott, Super Fly, Super Duper Fly, probably, and uh, the Brat Functified definitely is in my top three. But as far as my favorite goes, I got to go with Bahamadia, man, Collide. Oh, I mean, okay. so I think we're gonna make some people listen to that today. Just who listen to porn? Who watching porno, yo? Turn the porno the off. Steady flow that just—it's real fluid. Her flow is just real fluid, and, and the motion is real fluid. They got that song Three the Hard Way." I think Premier produced it. You know, um, 
definitely check out the Bahama Deal collab. That three the hard way is crazy, it's though. Crazy. It's crazy. By the way, it's crazy though. Three the hard way, and we we lost somebody. And, and somebody got a lot of their LA sounds going on right now. Yeah, is that LA? There's LA. Yeah. Now I'm there. He is. He back. Yeah. I thought you was getting jumped. We were about to send motherfuckers yeah. for you, bro. Never that. Everybody, your names, everybody do that while LA in town, bro. We got some hard fighting motherfuckers we sent over there, bro. Yeah, never Fuck that. that. I'm good. Trust. <laughs> all, right, so, all right, so we were talking about, we're still on there with the female rap album. Okay, no doubt. So anybody have any thoughts on female rap album before we move to the next subject? MP, yeah, man. Update, on lady, update on Lady Luck. Uh, she said around 7, 30, 8 o'clock. So, and what about a dismal break? Um, do we want to take one right now? Uh, after the rap right here before the next okay. subject. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Go ahead, bro. Oh, Mr. Listen. J. I'm sorry, Mr. J. I apologize, Mr. Listen, J. He kept going in and out. He kept going in and out. Mr. J said, fuck that. Let me get my list to the problem. <laughs> go ahead, Mr. J. I want yeah, you to fuck me out. Go ahead. Super heavyweight, yeah. Mr. J. Yeah, well, I wanted to get... Uh... Queen Latifah, Black Rain. Uh, so oh. had a few joints on there. You know, uh, UNITY, uh, Just Another Day, Weekend Love, you know, just to name a, a, few, a few of those joints on there. Rhapsody, Eve, of course. Oh, you man. Know, she's got a whole bunch of joints. Mm-hmm. I didn't say that. And we're going to go with a. Uh, uh, a female rapper who was kind of in the little brother circle, uh, Eternia, and she had an album called It's Life. And my final one, of course, is the one everybody mentioned, of course, Bahamadia collage. Dope. So, so I think that's I dope. That I think that's dope. That I think we lost LA again or eat some pitch blackness. But I think that's dope that we all named that album that I think a lot of people probably haven't listened to. And so Live in Vietnam, the audience, man, if y'all would check that behind the collage album, I think you'd be surprised, right? Um, so before we move further, you know, we're gonna take a dizzle break. And as always, here's the nipples, because a lot of them tend to be pointless. <laughs> Welcome back to Live in Vietnam. And, you know, we love Dizzle because uh, it tastes good and because they pay us for it. So you know how that goes. <laughs> hey, take a Dizzle break today, motherfuckers. Try it with the Hennessy. We call it off the Hizzle. And that shit is good as hell. Um, so welcome back to Live in Vietnam. As always, we're joined by our luscious panel and our celebrity guest host, Dennis L.A. White. Uh, we want to get into the dopest rap fe- uh, female single of all time uh which it, come on i got something to say about this if you guys don't mind i'm gonna start and i'm gonna kick it off um i gotta go with you know what i'm not gonna do it i'm gonna kick it over just because only because during the conversation this week me and pete been talking about this part on take your thunder i'm gonna go into the prime minister pop the pop pop go go first pete because i agree with you i think i'm gonna shock you on this one um you better not turn no curve off i just gave you the mic you know how I do. The, I got to do the most successful. Here it comes. My favorite. That's why you don't fuck with white folks, you ladies know? and gentlemen? I think the biggest <laughs> rap single. I think the biggest rap single might be the Cardi B Bodak Yellow, man. I okay, hey, give us some applause over there. You got the buttons. I think yeah. it might, it might be the biggest, like the most successful and the biggest rap single for a female ever. Damn, but against now, Nikki shit. 
I well, was, I, yeah, I was trying to analyze. Like, I was like, but Nikki, I think Ooh. Nikki's biggest song is like an R and B track that that the cheerleaders like and, and whatnot. But um, <laughs> if I gotta go with the dopest, dude, like my favorite Ooh. and the dopest rap single of all. Well, I mean, yeah, but of course, as always, D, you know, go, you can have a couple three, a couple three, four, five. That's how we do here. Queen Latifah, you and I, T Y. I, that's no that's to me like when I hear that record, it's just a really feel good record, man. It, it, you know, it's a real good feel good record. I like feel good music. I don't know about everybody else, but you know, I like feel good music. And you and the ITY is a feel good record. And Bodak Yellow, uh, that's a feel good record too. No, I agree. I, I like Bodak Yellow. That's a feel good record. Yeah, so, yeah. Sorry, I mean, I, I won't disagree, with, man. I gotta go with Cardi is the most successful and. As just the best overall single that I've ever heard was the Queen Latifah, you and I see why. No doubt. So, I mean, I'm going to slip in here and say I'm going to agree with you that I feel like the biggest female single was Bodak Yellow because I look at it in a lot of different ways. I mean, cultural impact, uh, airplay, sales, introduction of a artist who, honestly, man, after watching The Love and Hip Hop, we all thought it was going to be mediocre. I mean, I did and she came and surprised a lot of people with that. But there are some dope singles. Uh, what was we lost you. Face your Wi-Fi went out, bro. Yo. Nah, I think everybody else's Wi-Fi went out. Hell yeah, nah, we was talking to each other. Yeah, we were talking to each other. Okay, so where did I leave off for y'all? The the first your first answer. Okay, so I say Bodak, Bo, like I agree with him, man. Bodak Yellow is the, but I for for reasons being that based on cultural impact, based on sales, based on the dopeness of the production. Also, man, when we watched Love and Hip Hop, I feel like a lot of us felt like she was gonna be a garbage artist, and she surprised a lot of people with what she dropped. Um. But so there's been some dope singles. I'm gonna say one that nobody probably gonna say, but Push It by Salt and Pepper. Yeah. Has there been a bigger single by a female artist than Push It? I mean, that shit played for 20 years. I don't know how many millions of mm -hmm. records it sold, but if you play it right now, you might start roller skating in your goddamn living room right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you might start couple skate, couple skate, grab a bitch. Um, so that's my man real quick, but I want to go to our, our celebrity guest tonight, uh, Dennis L.A. White, man. Biggest female sing rap singles, you know what I'm saying? As we celebrate the ladies tonight. Can't hear him. We, we, we can't hear you, L.A. We can't hear you, bro. My man is moving around the city, bro. You see him? Somebody else scooped him up. We can't hear him. So while while he fixes that glitch, I want to go over to the mutate god, man. Mutate god, uh, dope uh, rap sample, man. Come on, give it to us, bro. I know you got a lot to say on this, by the way. I mean, ah, uh, man, it's like with me, um, the UNITY is probably the most iconic female single ever to me. You know, I, I agree with the push it. The, the put the push it is, yeah, crazy, yeah. That, that, right? that, I mean, that really that raised, crazy. Like, <laughs> like, really crazy, man. I mean, raise a lot of people, and, bro. And, and you know, Bodak, Bodak Yellow is definitely in the category. But that motherfucking hey, sexy red come, want, coming for all that shit, like, for real. Oh, don't yeah, say sexy, that. Don't sexy sexy coming for it, man. Uh, don't don't start, hey, sexy coming for it, man. Sexy coming for it, man. God damn it, you. God damn it, 3D, we strong, the motherfucking devil son-in-law. Here he came with the booty on brown. We she coming with it, man. Waiting, so let's try to uh, wrap this question <laughs> up. Okay, so wait a minute. No, I don't want to wrap sure. it up. I want to bring her in. So I do want to introduce uh, what many of you many know, Jersey born, but Fayetteville's own. Like, you may know her from all kinds of shit, but shine the five album deal with Death Jam at 17. Welcome to the live Vietnam, Lady Love. Hey. Oh, oh, oh. I, I, look. I, I appreciate you. I appreciate how the now you know Vietnam y'all y'all accepted me. I was out there selling tons of CDs. We was on Skybo. We was on Ramsey. What? Um, 
I was out there. Shout out to my brother, Ronnie C. Uh, We're going to come pull up to the show when I get in town. Um, Big shout out to Ronnie show. C, bro. Yeah, my yeah, guy, Ronnie. Ronnie. He's, he's really good. And, and Paul, All of our guys. Paul, yeah. Paul, show. Me and Paul have been friends for like 20 years now. So I'm just really thankful yep. to have somebody Uh-oh. like you. Yo, love, man. So, thank you for gracing us with your presence, man. Big up as we celebrate the female MC tonight on Live from Vietnam. But I, I'm I'm happy to be here to celebrate the female MCs. So I'm gonna bring you right in. You know, first of all, I want to talk to you for a little second. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's get you. You know, at 17 years old, you signed a five album deal. Let the deal know. I mean. I mean, you've been moving around through this business for 20-something years now, love. Yes. I started, some pearls I, on us. I, I started when I was five. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I started with Def Jam uh, straight out of high school. Um, you, you learn quick. Well, you don't learn quick, but you learn eventually that this is the music business. So it doesn't matter how talented you are or how much, you know, how many bars you got or who's head spitting, you know, whose head you're spitting off. This is the music business. So while I acquired a lot of knowledge and I've met a lot of people and done a, a lot of incredible things, um, I'll be the first to admit my business might not have been the best on Def Jam. But um, I, I learned a lot and I met a lot of people and these are just connections that are still carrying me to this day. So I'm extremely thankful and grateful for the foundation that's been made. Well, man, you sound humble and well-spoken and sexy as a motherfucker. So... <laughs> We have also yeah. tonight a celebrity, a celebrity panelist, uh, Dennis L.A. White, who you may know. I don't yeah. know if you got your mic fixed, L.A. You there? Nah, he's still so mute. You see L.A. on your screen. He still got you. Got us on mute, L.A. I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna meet you on the attack when you down. Uh, so, look, we about to we going in on the next subject, which is the dopest female MC single drops of all time. So I know we put you on the spot, but what do you think the dopest female single drops of all time? Not album, but singles. Um, mm, okay. Mm. Uh, Brat, the Brat Funk the Five. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> things up. I know Missy Elliott shook the game up. You know, get your freak on a one minute man. Yes, um, what? I know, I'm, I know this might be a little soft, but Nicki Minaj moment for life. Um, mm -hmm. you play that. I I, I feel that like, hook is crazy. I, by the I way, I feel like I I am I am you know creme de la creme when it comes to bars. I feel like the best verse I ever heard from a female uh, was that monster verse that Nicki did on Kanye's uh, uh song Monster. I think I think that's the dopest verse I ever heard from a female. You know, I will say I got a motion response from that verse though. For real, though. go ahead. Yeah, I like that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So shout out to Nikki. Um, you know what I mean? Her and Megan going back and forth last night. That's cute. But uh, Crazy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, I think oh, Foxy Brown. I uh, see. I'm a, I'm a big I'm a big fan. You know what I mean? So so I, yeah, she got a lot of fun tonight. We've been talking yeah. about the ladies and the hell nah nah. I got a lot of fun tonight, love. Right. But you know, I, I I love the female. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to my homegirl Vita. I was on the phone with Vita earlier today. Vita. Yeah. Man. yeah. Shout out Lady of Rage. Lady of Rage calls me like the big sis. Uh, Nikki. D, oh, wow. Uh, uh, Nikki D. Um, I mean, I got a record deal because of Nikki D. A lot of people don't know that. So, um, shout, well, we shout out to Nikki D. I did. We listen to her as one of our favorite albums, like Daddy's Little Girl. That album was dope. Right. Yeah, so, so, I want to, I want to, I want to defer to Paul. I want to defer to Paul a little bit here, Lady Love. So, Paul, you guys are going to relate to Paul. Totally. Um, we oh, talk to your girl. Um, you Run know, the show. I know Luck for a while. We did a song back in the days, uh, Press Your Luck. Shouts out to uh, Star Studded who introduced us. And yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to Star Studded. Um, so we still on the, the, what, the female with the biggest rap single? Yes, sir. Um, I thought I gave my, my analogy on that one, though. I don't think Luck was on board at the time, though. Let, let yeah. me went. Yeah, I went with. Um, I haven't went to Looney yet. Yeah, it was Latin Looney that was was not. Okay. So can you hear me? All right. Yes, yeah, sir. Oh, you. there's yeah. LA. LA. We got LA back. You there? You there, LA? Yeah, I'm here. We heard it. 
Okay, Lady Luck. I think Dennis L.A. White is on board with us. There's Lady Luck, man. What's up? Yo, Lady Luck, you know I love you. Right. You know how we get down. It's been a minute. Who, who that? Who that? Dennis L.A. Dennis White. Oh, that's my man. We follow each other in everything on the gram, so that's the homie. Yeah, Absolutely, man. I'll do it. I, I got a phone for you. My, 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 you got to excuse me if I'm a little delayed. Yeah, I got no, terrible no. mobile, so. Okay. Well, just so y'all know, Atlanta's in town right now. A lady luck, I understand. You're going to be in town. We need to sit down with each of you. So just so y'all both know, y'all both in town. I got to be in town. Me, me, me and Dennis both in Georgia. First of all, I'm in Buford. Second of all, you have all the streaming platforms on lock with all these movies. Every time you're doing a casting, my beautiful wife yes. is sitting next to me. My beautiful wife is sitting next to me who looks like a, a, a young, a, a young, who you look like, baby? She look like everybody. But no, who they say you look like? Lauren London. You know, my, my, my wife is. is Lauren London. Watch out we're now. Okay, town. Lady Luck. We're not in town. We're not in town. So next time you're doing. Next time you're doing the uh the the, the next time you're doing the, the the tryouts for the movies. Next time you're looking for some good actresses and actors, we on board. I got you. I got you. Tap in with me. See me on the map. I got you. Yo, we gotta talk because I'm, I'm with a funding company who's funding independent films too. I'm gonna DM you when we get off here. So what? Uh, by the way, shout out to both of y'all, but y'all need to shout out to Barry Williams Films right here in the Ville, man. Got five movies on Tubi. Very successful producer, director, shot caller. And he would love to talk to both y'all. Barry Williams, owner of Red Room Studios, one of the dope, the, the, the dopest studio in the deal. It's not the Barry Williams fans. He commented tonight. And both of y'all should tap in with him because y'all would definitely love that. Motiv He's a motivated and funded entrepreneur for sure. And one of the heads of the city right now, for sure. Well, look, I got to get off this call. I appreciate you for having me. Thank you for, for everything, Paul. I appreciate you guys. Lady, you know, I love you. Everybody is nice to meet you guys. Yeah, we're going to link soon. We're going to definitely link soon. Yeah. If you and Fairville come to uh, 118 Johnson Street this Sunday at 3.30 p.m., it's a free movie screening for my movie called The Prayer. Come check it out. Movie I directed, co-written. Um, also, check me out on The Family Business on Netflix. Um, first two seasons on The Family Business. And I got a movie called Pros and Cons coming out on, on Tubi next month. So just awesome. check out. I got a lot of stuff going on. If you're interested in acting, my, my site is called actlikeyouknow.org. Um, and, you know, just tap in. We got, um, you know, you from the Ville uh, group on, on Facebook. Tune in. Know about what's going on in the Ville, man. I love you guys. I we love, love that you. site, by the way. That's a dope site. So shout out to Dennis L.A. White. We also are going to have a sit-down interview on a short from him. Man, go out to 118 Johnson. I'll be there. We will definitely celebrate with you, brother. Thank you so much, man. You're a friend of the show. You're always welcome. A whole lot of and shit for you, L.A. White, man. One love, two six. Ah. And yeah, no doubt. So uh, we are blessed with Lady Luck here. So, Paul, I'd like you to take over a little bit. And if you could talk, just give us a talk with Lady Luck, man. We're, we're glad to have her here. Interview her a little bit for us, man. I definitely know you got the new single, right? About to drop? Yeah, good. We got seven minutes because I'm in South Carolina by accident. So I'm, okay. I got to drive back to Georgia tonight. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we got the single out, Praise, produced by my homegirl, Chase De Niro. She's really dope out of D.C. Um, I ain't want to do music no more. I ain't even want to put this song out. Um, it all happened. Uh-oh. Huh? I said, oh, you too dope for that. You too dope for that, luck. Yeah, I hear you, man. But um, thank and I appreciate that. Thank you. But um, I just I just lost my taste for music. But um, <clears throat> it's just the way that the planets aligned. I um, I, cause I I thought I got forgotten last year, you know, uh, with this hip hop fiftieth thing, you know, and I was in the hospital. My mom's just fighting for her life for three months. So while we sitting there, they are not mentioning either one of us. You know what I'm saying? And they even had the gay. The gay 50 hip hop, all the lesbians. And I'm like, God damn, I, I ain't even where I'm supposed to be because I've been I've been gay taking hits for y'all and I can't even get into that doc. So wow, I, you're right. It was Tommy rough. right. My mom's transitioning me. And um that was rough and I was going through a lot. And then MTV called and they called with the 50th year hip hop and 
Street for Jersey, and they wanted me to perform with Latifah, Redman, and Wyclef, and everybody. And done uh, that renewed it. But then at the time when they said they want me to perform, I ain't got nothing to perform unless you want me to battle Remy. So I said, <laughs> <laughs> so I was, uh, I just happened to have, it wasn't that goddamn funny. But I had to, uh, it was to, funny enough, goddamn it. It was funny enough, goddamn it. Did you laugh? Motherfuckers was laughing real goddamn hard. But what happened was, um, we love you, lad. I was working on the album, I was working on the album before my mom had passed. And it's just that I was I was gonna shelf it, but because of that situation, um, I had to put that song out, and people are are really gravitating towards it. Um, it's doing really well. We just we cracked the top forty of our iTunes last week. Um, the spins is getting. I saw that. Spotify. Um, and again, I'm I'm super independent. Like all of this is coming out my pocket. You know what I mean? So it's like, um, but it's a lot of good things happening. We're doing a press run starting the first of February. So we're gonna go everywhere. I'm I'm definitely gonna stop in the Ville and um just working on it, just working on a lot, bro. You know. Well, if you do stop in the Ville, please let us know because you know we will bring all the support we got. We'll we'll bring things out. I do wanna say that while you definitely a Jersey artist, heavy with the you know that you you have been adopted from the Ville, man. Cats, cats in the Ville, love Lady Luck, man. We feel like you're one of ours, man. For I real. am, and you guys took care of me down there. Every time I was down there, there was so much love. And, and, and I tell you, I, I found Paul in, uh, in face, on Facebook. What was it, last night? Like 3, 4 in the morning, we going back and forth. And I'm like, Paul, I miss you. Where are you? What are you doing? Luck, I'm doing this. Whatever you want from me, I'm there. Which I think it's dope you say that because I feel the same way. I was an artist 20 years ago and I met Paul. Uh, I've known Paul a long time, but a couple months ago. And Paul reinvigorates a lot of people. He gets a lot of hate, man. But that dude don't do nothing but work. Tell him luck. He don't do nothing but work. Uh, he's a good guy. And uh, we would, you know, like I said, it speaks volumes for our friendship almost 20 years in. So um, I'm just extremely thankful for him. And um, I got his back like he got mine. The first significant you, feature I ever did. The very first well, significant feature I ever did in hip hop was with Lady Luck. That's dope. Well, that that means a lot. That it meant meant a lot to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as you know, as a a fan, you know, grew up like man. I remember you on the Symphony 2000. Simon Says. Oh, I got you this know? right here. I got it on my page here. You know, at that time, I was still like kind of in groupie mode. Like, oh man, I'm doing a song with. The, the hey, Lady Luck, you know. the Simon Says remix. Yo, you was on the Simon Says remix, son. Like, come on, man. Shout out to Buster Rhymes, Red Man, Method Man. Bananas, bananas. And hey, yo, another thing, love. At 17, to sign a five album deal at that time was unheard of for a female MC, man. Unheard of, bro. So I understand how you feel that you was. When you said left out of the 50, I said, damn, she was, bro. And she, you shouldn't have been. You absolutely nah, shouldn't but, have been. But but to 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 wrap up the year, and, and then it dropped on my birthday, too, which was, this is my first birthday without my mom, you know? So for, for the 50th anniversary, and I didn't even think nobody's going to remember me, let alone it dropped on my birthday, and we on MTV, let alone Latifah performed, and Lady Luck is number two. You know, it was a surreal moment. So um, I'm just appreciative of that. So I guess that that relationship with the MTV from the from the from the, from the right. right? Y'all know down in what? Red, all Luck did was stay outside, sell CDs. So when I'm performing uh, for the MTV thing, we were in Newark, and I was performing on top of this building with the Prudential Center behind me. But the surreal moment was I sold CDs on them corners down there five, ten years straight. So for me to be up here and and fi I cried. You know, it was a it was surreal. It was a surreal moment. So I'm guessing that an MTV relationship was still good with you from that first family of when you you you, you film on MTV, so you have a relationship there, right? Now, we was on Bravo. Uh, the MTV thing, to be honest with you, uh, that that wasn't a relationship with actually the network. Um, I, I honestly believe it was uh, Latifah and Shaquem because they were executive producers. Oh. Yeah. So um, so we definitely working. Like I said, the video uh, praise is out right now. 
Um, we have the follow-up single. I, I'm making music right now to, to, to higher your frequency. I'm not doing no more gangster rap. I'm not killing nobody. I've lost too many people in my life. Um, I'm not going to rap about negativity and the things that's destroying me and my community. Um, and I might sound like an old head because I remember when people were saying that when I was younger because I was blinded by ignorance. But I promised to raise the frequency. And I promise to make emotional music, not, you know, not no emo and, you know, you do drugs if you want. But I just I just want to make music for people who have feelings and people who feel like. She said you do drugs if you want. Like I said, do drugs if you want. That's yeah, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not going to listen. This is a hard life. This life is hard. So <laughs> whatever yeah. you got to do to cope Facts. with this shit, man. Yeah. So I, I hope that. So look. First of all, man, first of all, nothing but mad love and respect from everybody on the panel, man, and big ups to P, as always. Sure. But I would hope you stay on for the, our last subject tonight, as we've celebrated the ladies of the hip-hop all night, is why are there not more female producers? How long is this? I would love to get your... Yeah. I'm sitting here waiting to hit go to go back to Georgia. So tell me, we're going to do this topic. Don't make it 20 minutes now. Here it comes. <laughs> Why are there not more female producers in hip hop, Lady Luck? Because sometimes they be trash. But I will tell you, I, lately there has been a lot of fire. Now, if, at first, females producing, you guys, you guys build your own cliques. You don't be trying to let people in. And then, you know, uh, a lot of guys, you might not be trying to teach the females how to do their thing. To be honest with you, I think today more than ever there's more female producers. You know, um, shout out to Shorty. I don't know, I forgot her name. Who did Crown by Jay Z on, on uh, Wonder Girl? Oh, Wonder Girl. Wonder yeah, Girl. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That was my top right the list. And, She's the top right now. Yeah. Majority of my new music is produced by females. Like I'm working with, like I said, Case De Niro. She out of DC. Yeah, Case De Niro. I wrote that down because I, I, no. I wanted. Yeah. Stupid with it. Uh, it's a girl named Leash the Beast. She is stupid with it. It's a girl named Sean, right? See, I get chills every time I think about Sean. Her name is C H X N. Sean. Talent is an understatement. Um, and I have other people who are talented, but I'm not fucking with them no more, so I'm not gonna say their names. But, <laughs> but I, majority, majority yeah, of Paul got the button. Just so you know, look, Paul got the button. Right, but the of my music right now is produced by females because females are super duper incredible right now, and you don't know who's behind that beat. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, Thanks, man. shout out to my girls making way. Shout out, shout out, shout out. So, I want to go over to uh, the, the Mutate God, man. Why are there more female producers in hip hop, bro? I think, I think, you know, I think because like, like dudes, man, we be, you know, they we used to run the industry, so. It was clicked up and then they won't let nobody in. And, and when they did try to, they would just like not teach them or they would just be trying to fuck. So, you know what I'm saying? That's just how it went back then. You know, it was like chauvinistic. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's the, that's the main reason, man. But nowadays, like Luck said, man, I believe a lot of young female producers is coming up on the Internet. They're going crazy. But I do got a question for Luck, though. Go ahead. Luck. Do we do we do you got some music or will we have some music in the future with you and Ronnie C? Oh, dope. I want to do a full project with Ronnie C. I have songs with Ronnie C. Like I got this one song um with me, him, and Star Studded, and I think Trap is on it. Uh uh yeah, Bill's that record. Uh, yeah. And, and, yeah, you remember that yeah, record? Trap Street, yeah, Trap Streets, that's my guy. <laughs> I mean, Ronnie C released one of the dopest uh, under the radar records of last year, man. And I, I rocked that shit. Him and uh, Rain did Losers, which is a crazy single. Crazy Yo, single. Rain Nine, Nine, shout out to Rain Nine One Zero. Yo, y'all ain't here for me, but Ronnie C all over that new John J Cole project. Y'all ain't here for me. Uh oh, uh oh, go shout out to Ronnie C, bro. You know, That's my to guy. You. Definitely a big I guy. I actually team. heard it first before y'all, but. Keep it moving. Yeah, so I'm so <laughs> proud of him, and he still goes to work. He he still, he still drinks Heineken's and wears his his his, his glasses. So he, you might can catch him over there at Izzy's at any time, and he'll drop your mail off on time as well. Shout out to my man Ronnie C. Fuck as hell. He will drop your mail off on time. I love that. And name. he will be at Izzy's in the daylight drinking shots of Heineken. Good, yeah. good luck keeping up with him. I love him. <laughs> 
Yo, yeah, I, I love it. Love, yo, life is a real two six five. Fuck it, I love it, yo. I love it. Yo, yo, he he gonna get swung on because one day he on the phone me. He's like, yo, I just love you. I love your spirit. I love your breasts. I love your smile. My girl from Brooklyn. He don't. Why understand. didn't they love your breasts? <laughs> <laughs> Like so, so when she hear him say, "Why are you so Ronnie?" Yo. Oh, that's my brother. She's like, "Well, who kind of brother talk to you like that?" She don't understand. I say, oh, Ronnie." Ronnie, he'll swing on you, Ronnie. You gotta watch it, man. Ronnie, a wild yeah, boy. He might swing back because you know how Ronnie is. <laughs> yeah. So shout out to Ronnie and uh, go ahead and uh, here's the panties. Not the best thing in the world, but right next to it. Um, I'm gonna take a shot on that. So I want to kick this over to the historian, Mr. J, man. Why aren't there more female producers in hip hop, bro? I think we pretty much covered, you know, the the reality of, you know, chauvinism and hip hop. Guys have been, you know, the gatekeepers to that. Um, big shout out to uh, Knotts. Uh, he had a, a seminar on production in Greensboro, uh, I think about two weeks ago. And I think he had some females in there. And his class as well, so you know that's that's a step in the right direction, having people kind of learn learn from people like that, you know, learn from producers like like Knox. Um, and I do see a lot more females getting in getting in that production game. Yeah, shout out. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Nowadays, I, I assume it's going to only increase. Uh, I'm gonna go over to the Prime Minister Paul Masson, the Pod Father, bro. P. What you think, bro? I don't really got much to say because y'all covered everything. And but I want I, I will probably throw in interest. Yeah. Maybe it's not a big interest for a lot of females to produce hip hop beats or rap beats. You know, like a lot of people don't never really bring interest into account for a lot of these things where there's not a lot of That's people true. doing them. You know, it's kind of like you know you look at the like. The, I hate to always go with the cornerback in um in football, but not a lot of white dudes is is interested in being cornerback because they sure as hell can't fucking make the cuts. Shout out to Jason Seymour. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think like you said, people clicked up. Don't really like you know trying to teach no females. Probably not no females coming around. And anytime females are coming around, they're trying to bone them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Anytime Again, they're in the studio, they're trying to they're trying to get in their panties. So they're not thinking about yeah. Let me teach you how to make beats. <laughs> well, absolutely. What I, what I will say is that a lot of dope producers you, you may know are the actual artists. Like Nicki Minaj produces her own some of her own tracks. Missy produced a lot of her own music. So I mean, a lot of the artists you hear produce some music, whether that was a production credit or whatever. I just think it's the math and science thing. Like boys like math and science, and we all know SR10 Pro, a role is a lot about math and science. I mean, and the shit is mad boring. As an artist who's never been a producer, let me just tell you this. I hated waiting for that beat. Like they would kill me with that. Like I just, just want to spit. I want to write my shit. Well, I, why is it taking so long with the beat? So it takes some patience and whatever. I would have been more than happy to have a, a female producer when I was an artist 20 years ago because I think they would have gave me a different dynamic in the studio. And I would have probably tried to fuck too. But hey, so there it is. Um, any, anybody got anything to add to before we you know we close it out? Yeah, I'm good. I think they should treat it like a STEM program, man. Like you said, treat it like a STEM program. What's that mean? So that, you know, science, engineering, math, technology, you know what I'm saying? Treat it like that. You know, you, you try to go out and get more more people involved. Well, more shout involved. out to Wonder Girl because her beats are crazy and I would rap over any of them. So shout out to Wonder Girl. Uh, and, and, and Chase Nero is, is with a C H A Y S E. You know, people do weird stuff with spelling now. So me. I wrote that shit down. You had me writing some crazy shit, Luck. I'm a writer. You had me writing crazy shit. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you she's stupid with it. Like, stupid with it. So, yeah, Chase De Niro, y'all. Y'all make sure y'all follow her. Show her love. And and I'll be showing all the females love who, who I'm working with. So, you, you know, you keep tuned in to my page and you'll definitely hear or see something. So everybody that's on the like and listen to Live in Vietnam, please follow Lady Luck. First and foremost, Luck, man. 
thank you so much, man. We love you so much. Thank you for coming on the show. We really appreciate your time, man. Nah, I just I just had to get out of here. I gotta get get on the highway, but um, I got session at ten o'clock in Georgia. But I think I think uh, uh I thank Paul again, and Paul, you know I love you. And when I get to the bill, I'm definitely love you, Luck. We all gonna get drunk with Ronnie C. I already told him, so we'll have a good time. And I'll see we you there, we there, we there, we there. All right, thank you, Paul. I love you, man. Mm-hmm. Hit me and thank you guys again. I appreciate all of y'all. Peace, peace. Right, peace, 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 man. One. So, as always, before we cut off, anybody, guys, you got some closing thoughts? Anybody got closing thoughts? Uh, go ahead, Mr. J. Uh, quick shout outs. Uh, mixtape addicts, DJ King Flow. Um, I'm going to be on there interviewing um, on the 30th. 9 p.m. He's a cat out of France. Uh, I'll be talking about everything I got going on, talking about live from Vietnam. Shout out to him. I uh, just did the uh, Hood, the Mayor, and Passport Scoob interview for the documentary. Shout out to Yo, them. Shout out to Hood, the Mayor. Shout out to Scoob. Shout out, bro. Um, right now, I'm looking at uh, the Fashion and Hip Hop Awards. Uh, I might be doing something there. Yep, we'll be there. Uh, I'll be years. there in March. Yep. And uh, shout out to So Hollywood Podcast. I may be on there uh, coming up soon. It's talking more about what I got going on, of course, and shouting out everything everybody's got going on on the Live from Vietnam podcast. Absolutely, man. Sure. Uh, Let's go down to the mutate god, uh, the CEO of Wood Boy Digital. Got a ton going on. Shout out the shout out the yeah. festival too while you're at it. But go ahead, mutate. Yeah, yeah, mutate festivals on the way. Um, April sixth. Nah, we changing Uh-oh. the date. It's gonna it's gonna be the thirteenth. We we didn't want to we didn't want to compete with Dreamville. That's a that's a no, hell of a do not. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No. Smart, move. Smart move. Smart move. So my advisor said, you know what I mean, <laughs> like. Go the following week. You know what I mean? So I was like, who's right, upside cool. your fucking melon? That's what you're about to say. Who's upside your melon? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, yeah, we we, we pushing the date to the 13th. So you know, I'll be putting all that promo out and all that. And um, but uh, yeah, Mutate Fest April 13th. You know, we got all all the slots and for the artists and everything, vendors, and and so and so and such and such. But um. Also, shout out to my boy Uncle Chuck. You know what I mean? You know how we do. Shout out to Uncle um, Chuck. We, and by the way, hosted by Big Face over there. Hosted by Big Face on that festival. Oh, for sure. Shout for out sure. to Uncle Chuck. For sure. Shout out to Uncle Chuck. Um, what else? What else we got? Uh, yeah, it's pretty Come much on. it right you now. Got the the mother, stack. You got Payola yeah, Stacks out. Got Payola Payola Stacks. Payola Stacks. We, got the, we got a lot of stuff going on, man. Like we got the Medeo uh, magazine. I want it more. I want it more than ever. You know what I mean, you go out there and stream with. that Payola Stacks. I want it more than ever. Album. Yeah, I want it more than ever. The, M- M- the Madeo magazine, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're putting, oh, we're my God. Hey, by the way, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Keeping that. Everybody go follow yeah, that yeah. Madeo magazine. It's dope. Yeah, yeah. We it's we helping dope. pushing that. We partnership with my peoples, and we helping them out with that. So, you know. Yeah, man. And, you know, shout out you know, shout out to whole World Boy Digital and everybody in between, man. You know what it is. 4728376. Shout out to you, Strong, for 25 you. years pushing the culture forward in the area, man. Big ups to you. Appreciate, appreciate uh, you. Always. Appreciate your face. 100%, bro. So we're going to go over to uh, Oso. Uh, shout out to Oso Talented, man. Oso recording artist right here. Latin Loonies, man. Man, yeah, definitely. Shout out, shout out to Born Talented, man. Um, Born Talented. We, we, we definitely work. Oso is killing it, man. His visuals look crazy, bro. Yeah, man, we definitely in there trying to trying to create content for everybody. The good vibes, I love that whole good vibes thing y'all got popping. That yeah, shit man, is it's, dope. It's, it's it's blowing up, man. You know, shout out to every you. artist. If you're an artist in nine one zero or the surrounding areas, by the way, get pay all the stacks in there, man. Go do the good vibes. Yeah, we shit. working that on this fire. We def- yeah. we definitely gonna work on it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you gotta get in there. Got back. I'm sorry, Looney. Go ahead, man. No, all good. Uh, you know, definitely big shout out to Circle of Kings. I know uh, you're gonna be out there at the fight. You know what I'm saying? We're, probably, we're going to Miami, baby. Live, you know what I'm we're hide your butt cheeks. Um, no, don't hide them. Don't hide them. Don't hide them. Hey, yo. 
Shout out to uh, I'm flying. I, I'm flying first class. Whoa. Class. Second class. I'm flying second class down there, boy. That's oh. bumps in the bathroom. Whoa. But oh. wow. <laughs> Y'all crazy, man. Hey, Looney, man. Get these boys, man. Get these boys, man. You know what I'm saying? Big shout out to uh, LLT Radio, man. We're definitely putting in work. We're trying to run up, you know, yes. indie artist streams up and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, Andy artist, get it, your boy Looney, man. He be giving y'all mad props. He's running this. Same with P, man. We're going to get into that, but go ahead, Looney. Yeah, Big Dev, I was yeah. about to say, I'll definitely tap in with, uh, with Paul. You know, Paul's on the same thing as well. So that's two sources. Y'all can run y'all streams up. You know what I'm saying? Y'all just, just got to tap in. You know what I'm saying? That's what they don't see. They see the five of us on this camera. They don't understand the network and power what we put together right here. And this, that's hey, to the city, man, this is what it's about. To the world, this is what it's about. Um. And then you know, definitely a, a, a big shout out to everybody you know that's that's been listening to to my new single. You know, I just checked in on my streams. We're hitting one hundred and thirty thousand on Spotify, so that's that's major. I, I really, really uh, so just so you know, this morning when my alarm went off, it was on Supremo. I was Supremo woke me up this morning, bro. That's what's up, man. I appreciate <laughs> that's that. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I think me, I think uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm gonna be out there at the, the Mutate Festival. Am I not? Am I, not, am I right? Oh, yeah, man, you, 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 you yeah. giving up the sauce too early, man. You Come on, man. Don't give up the sauce. They gave up the sauce too early, man. Ah. Should have given up the little baby face with the honey barbecue. It's all good. He's hey, gonna be there, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he there though. He there. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big shout out to the Mutate Festival, man. Big shout out to everybody. It's gonna be huge. I mean, we're gonna get the dopest. And by the way, I'm gonna go ahead and say, Son of the Star, he hasn't committed, but we basically commit for him. Son of the Star gonna be out there too. I'm a Sunny, fan. Sonny, your boy. I, I keep hearing BTS gonna come. And then well, hey, finally, what? but I'll not work, at least, you know. I'll work that out. We can make that happen. Definitely, man. Pro Sinatra. I'm trying to get a single with Pro Sinatra right now. Like, shout out to Pro Sinatra, bro. Shout out yeah. to uh, all them boys. BTS, Blood to the Sweat. So I want to go over to. Um, 260 story in uh, Empire Zone, Mr. J. Shout out, Mr. J. They did a shout yeah. out. Yeah. Well, God damn it. Shout out to you, Paul. Do your shout out. Help me. Uh, Help shout me. out to everybody that tuned in. Shouts out to everybody that commented. Shouts out to Dennis L.A. White. Shouts out to Lady Luck. Love you. Yes. Um. Shouts out to the Live for Vietnam cast. Circle of Kings. We're going to yep. we'll try to get the Circle of Kings up on uh, Tubi. Or Roku or something. We're about to work on that. It's happening. You know what's happening. Yeah, it's about to happen. To, you know, they ain't ready for that. But it's about to happen. Barry Williams, text Barry Williams and said, you think we could get it up on there? He's like, I don't see why not try it. You know, don't hurt to try it. So we'll see. We can get Circle of Kings up on Tubi or something. Barry is that guy, by the way. Yeah, shout, shout out to, to my Barry dog, right Gia. <laughs> oh, shout out to Gia, man. Hey, Gia, you miss Big Face? I'm the only one she don't bark at. She hates all y'all so much. She don't she hate this me like a motherfucker, bro. Oh, she's going to bite you. If we let her loose on you, lady, she'll bite your ass. You taste like that on. She said you taste like that on. Oh, man. So I want to give my shout out to all y'all, first and foremost, man. Shout out to my guys. Every Friday, I look forward to getting the eye. My guys is on here. I don't know what y'all get to live, but I get to live where I get to talk to my guys on Friday night and do this shit for a living, which is great. Shout out to Dizzle, man, for making this happen. They pay the bills. They keep the electric on. Yo, yo, get the Lizzle. Dizzle. It's a great uh, taste of mango. Mix that shit up with some liquors. Uh, shout out to L.A. White, man. Welcome home, bro. And thanks so much. Lady Luck, man. What a dope guest she was. Shout out to yeah, her, she man. You know, the whole Fanville, man. Don't sleep on yourself, man. Y'all, y'all working with New York and Los Angeles. Atlanta can't change your life, but Fayetteville can. Uh, it's changed mine and all these cats that you see on the TV screen right here. Um, so shout out to the female MCs of the two six. So right now, I mean, I can shout out a lot of females, but I'll say there's an Augusta rapper who is living in Fayetteville now, a female rapper who I can't help but love. Cami got bars. Shout out to Cami got bars, man. I love her music. Shout out to A game. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Can I shout out one more person that uh, there was no, a name. you cannot. Nobody said his name on the show. We got to mention her because she was the first female rapper, um, according to record deals, is Roxanne Shante. So, shouts out to Roxanne. Yeah, Shante. shout out to her for sure. Like, you know, God, the rock and the other rocks. Both rocks. Or the best single or the best album, but you know, 
Shout out to Roxanne Conte. Her bio movie was dope too. On what was on Netflix yes. a little while yeah, ago. That yeah, joint was yeah. tight, bro. Yeah. I, I learned a lot on that. And shout out to the explosion of female MCs in Fanville because you know, Straw will tell you this, Paul will tell you this, a lot of us tell you this. Twenty three years ago wasn't any. There was none. And now no, look, no. we got like we got chicks battling each other. They about to beat each other's ass in parking lots out here. I mean, we got dope ass in the season to build now. That's female. And if you, Nisi Brown will whip y'all's ass. Watch out. Juicy Ma definitely got good music too. Yep. Hey, yep. Right yep. Shout out to Juicy Ma. By the way, shout out, shout out to Jesus Sandra, your dopest tattoo artist you may never know. Shout out to big ass Jesus. That's my guy. And he said Juicy Ma. So shout out to him, man. Jesus is my guy. So, uh, so thank you everyone for joining us tonight. As live and fan now, I think you got a whole bunch of ass shit. And that's what we're here to bring you, man. Until next week, man. For all the cats here, ah, oh seven shit. Beats, beats, my trail, straight killer, Ville, dog, dog, dog. dog.